Put your eyes outside the door Let them fill you with the Holy Ghost And everything that is not of him Let them do with it Cause heaven is right above you God is willing to download to you His spirit abundantly just for you and me Part of me always wants to stay in my comfort zone and do nothing. That is why every day I have to battle with myself. I have to work on myself to become better. There are times when I experience failure and get too tired to fight. I become less like myself. I may even overlook how I hurt people close to me with my words. The only thing that helps me recover is prayer. It gives me the strength within me to fight and overcome difficulties. Jesus helps me become better, and in this, I find happiness.
the drill, right? <laughs> so hallelujah. <laughs> so who, who went out during the weekend and asked the question to someone and said, can I pray for you? Anybody? Well done, well done. Anybody else? You know, I, I know we used to be called hear the word, but we, we, we changed because we didn't want to be just hear the word, we wanted to be doers of the word. The Bible says, do not be only be hearers of the word, but be doers. So for us to see a demonstration of the power of God, we need to go out and do. Amen? So we, we have been on a journey, and uh, this is our third session in the series, The Demonstration of the Power of God. And last week we said that the, Jesus said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And that means that you have the power, the, you have the ability, you have the, the power to do what he called us to do. Amen. And we said that one of the easiest ways to win souls, one of the easiest ways to go and make a difference is to say when somebody comes up with a problem, just say, do you mind if I pray for you? And you pray for them. As you do, God will meet you. Miracles will happen. Things will begin to happen. And you'll see the power of God. Amen. So today we want to continue and uh, in the same vein we are talking about the demonstration of the power of God and, our, and I'm going to talk about, uh, uh, I themed this, working the works of God. So we, last week we said we can demonstrate the power of God, so I want to talk about working the works of God. And our anger scriptures again, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 4 to 5. Paul says, in my speech and my preaching, we are not with persuasive words of human wisdom, uh, but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith may not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. My preaching was not with persuasion of human wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith may not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And on another occasion, in 1 Corinthians 4.20, this is what he says. He says, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but it's a matter of power. And we did say that one of the challenges that we have is that we have so many motivational speakers in the pulpits now. We have moved away from the power of God. What we see in our churches is a matter of talk. We are so talkative, but we can't demonstrate the power. And many of us as believers, even when we walk as we, in our lives, wherever we are, we, we talk big. You know, where I grew up, they told us that barking dogs seldom bite. And that's the challenge that we have with the church now. The church has become a barking dog. But I believe God is calling us back to the place of power, to the place of demonstrating the power of God, to the place of walking in the power of God. And it's not complicated. It's not you. It's God working through you because he said you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. If the Holy Spirit has come upon you, the power is in you. The power to do the works of God is already in you. The only problem is that we have not been operating in that power. We were too shy or we have convinced ourselves that we don't qualify. So today I want to, 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 again, talk very practically, very simply, and to show you that actually you have the power. There is a way for you to do it. We can work the works of God. So with that in mind, I, I'm going to kick off from John chapter 6, verses 28 to 29. 
John chapter 6, verses 28 to 29. The context is that the disciples have, uh, have just observed and noticed is Jesus in John chapter 6, starting from verse 1, how he fed 5,000 men uh, and their families. So it probably 15 to 20,000 people were fed using a young boy's lunch. I mean, just two fishes and five loaves of bread. And out of that, God worked the miracle. There's a multiplication. Jesus has done this incredible miracle and the people were fed and they actually was left over of 12 baskets. Can you believe it? I mean, you, you, you end up with leftovers which are more than what you started with. That's, that's an incredible miracle. So they've seen that. Then the next time they, they see Jesus, he walks on the sea, he walks on the water. And they, out of that, it really shocks them. And this is what they say in verse 28 and 29. Then because they'd seen that they witnessed the working of God, they witnessed what Jesus had done. This was, then they said to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? Great question. I mean, having seen this, what shall we do? We see you are doing the works of God. We see that God is working in you. What shall we do? Not what shall you do that the works of God will work in us. But he says, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? In other words, it's us who are going to do it. It's us who have the power. So they didn't say, what shall the Holy Spirit do? He says, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? So the person who is supposed to work the works of God is you. So say to your neighbor, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? So when we talk about the demonstration of the power of God, it's not God who is demonstrating his power. You have the power. You receive the power. So the question that we ask is, what shall we do? The question that the disciples ask is the question we want to answer today. What shall we do that we may work the works of God? And Jesus answered very simply, verse 29, and he said to them, this is the work of God. That you believe in him whom he sent. To the question, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? He says, this is the work of God, that you may believe on him whom he sent. So when you believe on Jesus, then you will work the works of God. Didn't he say that uh, those who believe in me? So for you to unlock the working of God, you need to believe on Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says these signs shall follow those who believe. So the thing that qualifies you to work the works of God is believing. So faith is critical for you to work the works of God. It says you need to believe him whom the Father has sent. So what is it we have to believe about Jesus? What is it that we have to believe about him whom he sent? In other words, we have to believe and take seriously the words of him whom the Father has sent. So if we take the words of Jesus seriously, if we begin to believe the words of Jesus... If we begin to act on the words of Jesus, then we will work the works of God. So what is it that he said that we should believe? In Acts chapter 1 verses 4 and 8, this is what he says. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. So you must believe him whom the Father sent. And him whom the Father sent, he says, wait in Jerusalem until you are endured with power, until you are filled with the promise, until you receive the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard of me, from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. But you you, verse 8, shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. In other words, he says, you know what? You, if you believe him whom he sent, if you believe what he said, his command when he was living, he said, wait in Jerusalem until you receive the power. When we wait and we receive the power and we are filled with the Holy Spirit, if we believe him and we begin to do what he said, he said, you are going to give credible witness. You are going to produce the proof of who I am. When you wait in Jerusalem, when you are clothed with power, you are going to be credible witnesses of the resurrection of Jesus. You are going to do the works of God. So he says the, to the question, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? He says, believe on him whom the Father sent. So you believe on him because he said you will receive power. So if you believe that you received power, you are going to walk in power. But here's the challenge. The challenge, most of us, is we don't believe Jesus. When Jesus says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, we say, ah, you know, he was not talking about me. I think he was talking about the apostles, the prophets, and the, this. But no, no, that's not what he said. He said, you, all of you, shall receive power when, you, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So when you believe, 
the words of Jesus. When you believe what he said, you will work the works of God. Let's take it further. What shall we believe about him who came? This is what he says in John 14, 8 to 11. He says, Philip says to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. And Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I'm in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak, to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. In other words, remember, what shall we do that we may work the works of the Father? So they had seen him work the works of the Father. And he is now saying, you know, the works of the Father that I work, I work because I'm in relationship with the Father. I do what I see my Father do. I say what I see my Father say. Then he says in verse 11, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works. In other words, it says, if you don't believe my words, you have to believe my works. What is Jesus saying? He is saying, I have to work works that make you believe what I say. There has to be proof. There needs to be evidence that backs up what I am saying. The problem is that the church is too talkative. We talk a lot, but there is no power. We can't say, believe the works. If you can't believe my words, believe my works. If I say, Jesus is risen from the dead, and you say, how do I know? And we work some miracles saying, if you don't believe my words, believe the works. If somebody says, what has your God done? And you say, you know, if you are sick, I'll pray for you. You pray for them and they are healed. Say, if you don't believe my words, believe the works. This is what Jesus is saying. This is how we work the works of God. That is why I was challenging you to say, when you encounter people in your workplace, we have problems. Don't just commiserate with them. Don't sympathize with them. It won't help them. But you say to them, you know what? Do you mind if I pray for you? You're having a problem in your home. Do you mind if I pray for you? If you pray for them, God will come through. When God comes through, then you say, if you didn't believe what I was telling you about Jesus, believe the works. Yes. Did, did you follow what I'm saying? So we must be ready to ask that question. Would you mind if I pray for you? Jesus says, I have the works that prove. I have produced the proof evidence. I mean, Maurice Cerullo used to, used to call this, he said that uh, we are proof producers. We are called by God to produce proof that he is alive. To produce proof that what we say can be begged and is begged by the word of God. Let's move on. Believe on him whom the father sent. What shall we do that we may work the works of God? In John 14 verses 12 to 14, this is what Jesus says. This is what we must believe. When we believe him whom the father has sent, when we believe what he said, when we act on what he says, we will work the works of God. The only problem is we have too many unbelieving believers. This is the work of God. That you may believe him whom the Father sent. What did he say in John 14, 12? Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me. What must we do that we may work the works of God? Believe on him whom the Father has sent. And Jesus says, he who believes in me, the works that I do, will he do also. And even greater works than these shall he do because I go to my father. So how can we work the works of God? We need to believe him whom the father has said. And him whom the father has said is looking at you and saying, you, 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 you can do, if you believe in me, you can do the very works that I'm doing. Don't wait for a prophet. You, if you believe. He didn't say if you're a fivefold minister. He says, if you believe in me, he who believes in me. The works that I do, shall he do? Amen. Hallelujah. So when we believe that word, so what, what is he saying? He's saying, remember I was telling you that we as believers, we, are so, we have so, become so materialistic. We have become so materialistic. I can believe God for a house. Oh, I need a car. I actually can fast, fast and pray for a car. I believe God. I need a new suit. I'm going to believe God for a new suit. But when was the last time you actually fasted that you might work the works of God? When was the last time you took John 14, 12 and said, Jesus, this is what you said. You said, he who believes in me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works shall I do, they do because I go to the Father. Then you say, Jesus, I'm believing you. I'm going to be praying. I'm going to stay in faith. I'm going to, uh, to press in until those works that you promise become a reality. Why are we so good at, at claiming Philippians 4, 19, but you can't claim John 14, 12? He who believes in me, the very works that I do, 
shall he do? What shall we do that we may work the works of God? Am, am I talking to somebody? Yes. You know, I have a strange feeling that as God sits in heaven and he looks at his church, he's shaking his head. And he's saying, I can't believe these guys. I give them all this power. I give them this so that they can solve the problems of the world. That they can meet the needs of people. That I may receive the glory. And they just sit on their feet. All they think is a promotion. The only time we pray is you are thinking about your promotion. Anyway, let me not go there. Let me, let me st stay Christian. Oh Lord, help me. So, in verse 18, he says, Whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. You know, I, I read this this week, and, and I, I mean, I was shocked when I read this scripture. I mean, I have known it, I have taught about it, but for some strange reason, I always separated John 14, 12 from John, 30, John 14, 13 and 14. When I needed things from God, I, I would quote John 30, 14, 13, and 14. Whatever you believe or you ask in my name, you will do, that will I do. And I will ask. I ask for money. I ask for a wife. And I got one. And I ask for children. And I got two. And I ask for things. I ask for things. And I, and I love God. God, thank you for hearing. But the context is, he who believes in me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And because he's talking about doing the works of God, then he says, whatsoever you ask of me, concerning doing the works of God, that will I do. But how did we separate it? He says, you, you ask, when you ask for these things and you do these works, the Father is glorified. So we are robbing the Father of glory because we are just asking for ourselves. We are selfish. We are not asking about the things that matter to him. He says, whatever you ask when you are believing me to do the works that I do. When you go before God and say, God, you, you, Jesus says, the works that he did, we will do. So I'm believing you and I'm setting myself and I'm asking in the name of Jesus that I may work the works of the Father. Empower me that I may work the works of the Father. When I lay hands on the sick, let them recover. When I pray for families which are being divorced, let them be reunited. When I break the powers of darkness, let the de devil be defeated. And let me cast out demons in the name of Jesus. Why is it believers are afraid of witchcraft? Hi. Hey. I mean, oh, they may bewitch me. Oh, this may happen to me. But, but you have the power. He gave you power to cast out demons. Your family should actually be saying, oh, we must call him. Please, we are having problems. Can you pray? You pray and those demonic strongholds are broken. But if anybody talks about witchcraft, you will be the first to run. You know, I, I found a scripture that I am beginning to like. He says, the wicked flee when no man chases. <laughs> so if they talk about witchcraft and you start running, you, you have defined yourself. The wicked flee when no man chases. But the righteous are as bold as a lion. So as a believer, people should actually say, you know what, there are things that are happening in this family. We need somebody who, who, who understands the power of God. Then you come and you say, you demonic spirits, I banish you from this family. Whatever that was happening in this family, it stopped right now. And you make that declaration and things change. Yes. The, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? It says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. Isn't this the reason why James would say, you have because you ask not. Or if you ask, you ask for your selfish interest, you're just thinking about your car. There's nothing wrong with a car. You must believe God for a car. But that should not be the primary thing you are thinking about. You must be thinking about working the works of God. The question, the uppermost question in the life of a believer should be a question that says, what must I do that I may work the works of God? And Jesus says, believe on him whom he has sent. 
So the critical things for working the works of God are two things that we find in John 14 to 14. Number one, you need to believe. So we need faith. We are not exercising faith. We are not walking in faith. We are not doing anything. When you believe and you act on what Jesus said, then you will work the works of God. Number one. Number two, the second thing that you need, he says, whatever you ask in my name. When he talks about asking in my name, he's talking about his authority. When you understand authority, when you understand that you have the authority, you are authorized to operate in his name. When you understand faith and authority, you will work the works of God. Isn't that the reason that Jesus, when he was, before he left, he started by saying, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Then he turned and said, because that all authority has been given to me, now you go in my name. Now I am authorizing you to use my all authority. Hallelujah. So what must we do that we must work the works of God? Somebody will say, okay, Jesus says, you must work the works that I, the works that I do. They say, which works did you do? I'm glad you asked. Matthew 4, verses 23 to 25. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing all kinds of sickness, all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all the sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who had demon-possessed, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them. And the great multitudes followed him from Galilee, from Decapolis, from Jerusalem, from Judea, and beyond the Jordan. So these are the works that Jesus was doing. This is what he is saying. He he says, I healed all men of sicknesses. I healed all men of diseases. I cast out demons. I healed the paralytics. I raised the dead. He's saying, these are the same works. He's saying, what you have just seen me do is what you must do. And one of the things we see is that wherever Jesus proclaimed, Jesus went, there was a proclamation of the kingdom and a demonstration of the kingdom. Because the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, it's a matter of power. There has to be a demonstration of the power of God. Hallelujah. You know, most of us, we, we sit in our families, our families are, and, and, and most of them are not saved. Some of them, they come to you and they say, ah, you know, you are having problems, and, uh, and we are having problems in this family. What are they are actually saying, they're saying, since your God is useless, why don't we just go to a Sangoma? <laughs> and we accompany them because we are acknowledging that our God is useless. Now, how can somebody dare look me in the face and say, ah, we are having a problem in this family. I think we must travel. <laughs> if you don't understand my English, don't worry. <laughs> how? W w w travel? <laughs> when greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. When the power is in me, where are you? I mean... Uh, guys, uh, you insult me. How can you talk about traveling? The power is right here. Let's pray right now. Let's make a difference right now. L listen to me, church. Whatever problems are in your family, I want you to go this week. Go and begin to say, guys, you are having problems. I'm, go I'm calling a meeting, a family meeting. And I'm going to pray. When I pray, God is going to show up. And this thing is going to end. And God is going to show himself. Because the power of God, when we have faith and we have authority. This is what we must do. Not to just say, ah, no, if you think you wanted to go, but I can't come with you. But I can, if you want to travel, transport money, I may give you, but I am not coming. Hey. My daughter, what's wrong with us? We need to demonstrate the power of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What must we do that we must work the works of God? It says, believe on him whom the Father has sent. What did him whom the Father sent say? He said in Mark 16, verses 15 to 18, go into all the world 
and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So he says, those who believe in go preach the gospel. Then let there be a proclamation of the gospel. As you proclaim, there's a demonstration of power. As you go, as you go, these signs will follow you. The problem is that because we are not going, because we are not showing up. You see, when we don't show up, the power of God does not show up. When I show up and I say, I am an an ambassador of the King of Kings. You know, when the the American ambassador shows up, the United States has shown up. When the ambassador of the kingdom of heaven shows up, the kingdom of heaven is showed up. And yet we say the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, it's a matter of power. Where is the power? Hallelujah. What must we do that we must work the works of the Father? Skip. John chapter 2 verse 23. It says, now when he was in Jerusalem in the Passover, during the feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs which he did. When they saw the signs which he did, he produced the proof. He works, works. Says, if you don't believe my words, my words are begged by my works. I, I pray to God that somebody's going to get angry and say, no, 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 I'm tired of my family being harassed by the demons. And I keep saying, I have, uh, I have, I have a, a miracle working God, miracle working God, my foot. There must be a demonstration of the power of God. Okay, let me slow down. You see, many people believed in him because they saw the signs that he did. And many people are going to believe in Christ when they see the power of God at work in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Acts chapter 3, verses 6 and 9. Look at Peter. He's demonstrating what, what, what we are talking about. Jesus has been told, Peter has been told, he asked, or they asked, what shall we do? What must we do that we may work the works of the Father? And Jesus responded, do when you, this is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has said. And Peter believed whom Jesus has said. So he is going to the temple. He and John, they are going to the temple and they find this lame man who is by the gate beautiful. And then in verse 6, the Bible says, then Peter said to him, look at us. And that was verse 5. And then in verse 6 it says, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. L- listen, listen to Peter. Peter understood uh, Acts 1 verse 8. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes to you, uh, come upon you, and you'll be my witness. And Peter says, look, man, 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 man. I mean, I don't have gold. I don't have silver. I was a fisherman and I left all that. I'm no longer a businessman. I don't have money. But what I have, I give to you. What did he have? He had power. He knew what he had. And he says, because I have the power and the authority that is in the name of Jesus. So he says, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. He grabbed him and he made him walk. Why? Because he knew what he has. The problem with the church is that we don't know what we have. What must we do that we may work the works of God? Believe on him whom he has sent. If we believe what Jesus said, we will know what we have. And we will walk in both the authority and the power that has already been given to us. Hallelujah. He knew he had authority. He knew he had power. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Say to your neighbor, neighbor. I think he's talking sense. sense. Hallelujah. Now, let's get practical. You know, the, the main reason most believers don't go out and do the works of God is because they don't know how or they have been lied to. So I want to show you how to work the works of God. You see, the way to work the works of God 
is dependent on a number of things. They're, they're, they're about, uh, let's see, let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, there are about seven, eight things. Ways you can work the works of God. And I'm going, so we are going to be very practical. You see, the, the working the works of God, we say that depends on faith and authority. You have faith, you believe the words of Jesus, and you act on them. Number two, you understand the authority that you have been given in his name. That's why he says, go in my name without the authority in that name, without knowing that we have authority in that name, that powerful name, that we've been deputized to use that name. Then we can't do anything. It's not my name, it's not my power, it's not my authority. It's the authority in his name. So I have that authority. I was given the right to transact. Now, you, you, you can think, my, my wife is a, is a very wise woman, but I will use it as an example. Now, imagine if I, if, if I give my wife my, uh, my card, my credit card, no, not credit card, okay, my debit card, yeah, yeah, the, the one which is money, not the one which is, the not, yeah. So if I give her my debit card, and I say to her, your limit is 200,000 rand, you can transact, and she's traveling. So she, she goes. And then she comes back, she's hungry. She had the card, she has the cord, she has everything. And she comes back hungry. And I see, uh, you know, the, the, the blessing of the Lord makes strong. <laughs> so uh, I, I see uh, Slim, and I say, what happened? He said, ah, it was so tight. I mean, we, I, I, mean, I was hungry. I, I had to fast because I couldn't afford uh, food. I couldn't do anything. He said, ah, but I gave you the power and the authority to transact. Why were you not transacting? And this is what happens. Most of the time we are, we are struggling in life. And he's saying, he's saying, I just don't. Remember I told you, I, I have a conviction that in heaven, Jesus is sitting on the right hand of God, shaking his head. and say, ah. oh, oh, I mean, these people, I mean, how can I get through to these people? I gave them the ability and the power and the authority to transact. But they keep coming back to me. They say, Lord, do it. He say, what do you want me to do? I gave you the authority to transact. Why are you not transacting? I have often said a lot of our prayers are useless. And you get bitter with God. Oh God, why didn't you do this? And he said, why are you asking me to do what I have already authorized you to do? I believe in all night prayer and I pray all night prayer. And I think we need to reinstitute all night prayer. But I think some of these all night prayers are a lack of faith. We try to compensate instead of exercising the authority, instead of working the works of God, instead of doing, we want to go and try and say, God, you do. Yeah. Because we don't want to do, so we want to ask God to do. L listen to me. There's one prayer I know God will never answer. God will never answer a prayer when I ask him to do what he has told me to do. He won't do what he told me to do. If he has authorized me to do it, I can pray as much as I want, but I'll waste my time. So I'm just helping you so that you don't waste some of your time. Some of the fasts we do, I fast a lot, but some of the fasts that we do is just hunger strikes. And anyway, sorry, I didn't want to go there. Let me. Listen, let, let me put it clearly. We must pray. It's biblical to have all night prayer. Jesus, there are times when the Bible says Jesus prayed all night. It is necessary. We must fast. The Bible says, Jesus says, when you fast, he didn't say, if you. When means that it's expected for a believer to fast. But I must be fasting for the right things. If I'm fasting for things he has told me to do, he is not going to move. He is not moved by my fast. You know, I, I, have, I have a feeling that God is not does not pamper to stupidity. But anyway. So, where were we before you disturbed me? I was talking about practical things. Okay, yes, practical things. How do we work the works of God? You see, one of the things that is a challenge to believers 
is that we have this strange idea that uh, for me to, works, or to do the works of God, there's only one thing. I, I, I have to be anointed. I have to have the, the, the voice of the Spirit must say, this is what you are going to do. And because I don't hear the voice of the Spirit or I don't feel the anointing, then I don't do the works of God. Now, I want to show you that God does not use the same way for us to work the works of God. So I said, the, did you say eight, nine, what did you say? How many ways? Or whatever, we will count as we go. Number one, we work the works of God based on the authority of the believer. Number two, we work the works of God based on faith. Faith, it can be the faith of the believer who is, who is you are praying for, or it can be the faith of the one who is ministering. We also do the works of God based on the authority of the, an office. We can do the work of God because of the gifts of the Spirit as the Spirit moves. Now, this is what many of us want. We want to say, oh, we, you know, the only way to work the works of God is when the Spirit moves. Why? Because we know the Scripture says that the gifts are given as the Spirit wills. Then we say, oh, the Spirit did not will. So I couldn't do the works of God because there was no moving of the Spirit. You know that, 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 so that chorus we used to sing, when, when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon me, I will dance like David. It's as if we are saying that the only time I worship God, the only time I dance is when the Spirit of God comes on me. So if I am not dancing for God, it's because the Spirit has not come. So the fault is with the Spirit, not with me. But I can worship God by my choice. I don't have to wait for an anointing. I don't have to wait for an unction. Then of course you can work the works of God based on an anointing. But you can also work the works of God based on experience. Your experience with God. And finally, you can work the works of God based on obedience. You're just obeying him. So let, let's dive into to those things. Number one, using the authority of the believer to work the works of God. In Matthew chapter 10, verses 7 and 8, this is what the Bible says. And as you go preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. And freely you have received, freely you have given. So Jesus is saying, I have given you the authority in my name to go heal the sick. So on the basis of the authority that I have been given, whether I feel it or I don't feel it, it, I know the authority is there. So on the basis of that authority, I can say, well, I don't have to wait to say, oh, there's a demon manifesting in front of me. I'm waiting for the anointing. I'm waiting for the action. No, no, no. The authority doesn't have to be felt. I use that authority because I know I have an authority as a believer. He said, the Bible says he gave them authority and power to cast out demons and to heal the sick. So I act on the basis of the authority that I have as a child of God. I know I'm authorized by heaven. So we, whether I feel anything or I don't feel anything, I'm going to work the works of God. If I believe Jesus, if I believe him who has sent me, I'm going to, to when I find somebody who is sick, I'm going to lay hands because I say I have an authority as a child of God and based on that authority, I'm going to command that sickness to live so we can work the works of God simply on the basis of authority. Amen. Now here is where Jesus says for you to work the works of God believe on him who he has sent. Now the reason we don't pray for the sick on the basis of the authority is that we don't believe him who he has sent because he gave us the authority of his name but we don't believe him. He gave us a mandate and he says, I've given you the authority to go and do. You have an ability to transact. You are ambassadors of Christ. Go and transact, but we don't believe him. Are you, do, do you follow what I'm saying? Okay. So, just on the basis that I am a believer, I know I can work the works of God. I'm going to lay hands on the sick. I'm going to deal with the situations. Hallelujah. Amen. Number two. You, you can work the works of God on the basis of spiritual gifts, like we have already said. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to 11 says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the one same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another descending of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but to one and the same Spirit works all the these things distributing to each one individually as he wills. 
So I don't determine where, when the gifts of the Spirit will operate, but I'm available. I believe God and I'm available. The Bible says desire spiritual gifts. So my role is to desire and his role is to distribute them as he, as he wills. So if the Holy Spirit moves and he stirs up a word of knowledge, I'm going to work the works of God. But if he is not using the gifts of the Spirit, I'm going to use the authority of the believer. Whichever way I am going to work the works of God. Yep. Are we together? Yes. Number three. I'm going to use the, the faith, my faith, to believe God. Some people say, oh, you know, because I don't have faith. But let's, let's talk about this. You can use your faith. Listen to Acts chapter 3, verses 12, verses 12 to, verse, um, to verse 16. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people. This is after the healing of the, that lame man at the gate of beautiful. And he says, men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Why look so intently at us as though by our own power or godliness we have made this man walk? And in verse 16 says, and his name, through faith in his name, he has made this man strong, whom you see and you know. Yes, the faith which comes through him who has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Now, Listen, this guy didn't know anything about Jesus. The lame man, he didn't know anything about Jesus. It was not his faith. It's not the faith of the lame man that brought healing here. It is the faith of Peter. Peter and the John are the ones who had faith in the name of Jesus. They understood that to work the works of God, you need to believe on the one whom God has sent. And they said, Jesus gave us authority. He gave us his name. That's why he, when we have power. That's why he says, what we have, we give to you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. So this is the faith of the believer. So you as a believer, you can use your faith. You can grow your faith and begin to pray for people. Begin to work the works of God. It's it's an act of faith. You do it as an act of faith. By the way, remember the act of faith, we don't move by what we, are, what we see, but we, we are moved by faith. So you don't say, oh, you know what, I, I think I see, uh, I think I feel the faith. There's a place where you can have the gift of faith which is given by the Spirit. There's a place where you say, just like you do, I mean, if you have a headache, are you going to say, Lord, crank up, build, build my faith before I pray? You're just going to say, in the name of Jesus, you headache, I command you to leave. So that's what you are going to do. Are we together? Praise God. Number two, you can, you can work the works of God, not because of you, but because of the faith of the recipient. Are we, are we together? Listen to Acts 14, verses 8 and 10. Acts 14, 8 and 10. It says, And enlist a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb. We had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking, and Paul observing him intently, and seeing that he, the man, had faith to be healed. And with a loud voice, Paul said, Stand up straight on your feet. And he lived and walked. So Paul looked at this man, and he saw that this man had faith to be healed. So you can, you can work the works of God, not based on your faith, but on the faith of the recipient. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, there's some people who come to you and they'll say, you know what, I believe God and I've come here and I'm believing God for a miracle. I know that if you pray for me, I'm going to be healed. You are not going to say, oh, I'm not feeling faith in me. No, 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 no. It's not your faith. God is not limited to your faith. He can use any way. He can use the faith of the recipient rather than your faith. Amen. So why are you disqualifying yourself just because of your faith? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, last Sunday, I was looking for him. I can't find him. Uh, one of our fathers, the father of one of the members of the church, came to me and he, at the end of the service yesterday, last Sunday, and he says, you know what? You know what you were saying is true. You know, he says, uh, I, had, uh, I stayed with a grandchild, and this grandchild was sick. And this grandchild said to me, hey, granddad, if you lay your hands on me and pray for me, I will be healed, and tomorrow I will go to church. And he says, I was saying, what is this kid talking about? <laughs> and so the granddad and grandma had a discussion. And the grandma says, granddad, just do what she is saying. And he, I mean, he, he didn't even know what he was doing. And that's what he told me. I'm not putting words in. He, he says, I didn't know what I was doing. I just laid hands. He says, I just did what she said because my wife told me to do what she says. <laughs> they did. The next morning, they woke up and the kid was dressed up and ready to go to school. She was healed. Amen. You, you follow what I'm saying? 
And yet we have allowed the devil to tell us that because you are not feeling faith, don't pray. If somebody comes to you and says, oh, you are the ones who go to church. I think if you pray, I will be healed. And then you say, oh, no, I'm not feeling it. Feeling what? <laughs> what must we do that we may work the works of God? Paul perceived that this guy had faith for healing. If you perceive somebody has faith for healing, even if you don't have faith, your faith is irrelevant at that point. Just lay hands. So the faith of the recipient is important. So sometimes God does works even, even without the faith of the recipient. Do you remember that guy who was sick, the paralyzed man, that the, the friends came, they had faith, they opened the, the, the roof and they laid. And the Bible says that when Jesus observed their faith, not his faith, the faith of those who brought him, he healed him. So there will be people who come to you and they say, we have this person who has a problem. We believe God that if you do this, they are going to be healed. God will respect their faith. And yet we have allowed the devil to just tell us, ah, no, because you are not feeling faith. And uh, you know, uh, actually, you, you know, you have not been, the, the last few days you have been praying for yourself and your miracle has not yet happened. And because your miracle has not happened, so you can't pray for this. It's unrelated. <laughs> Look, Right now, here in South Africa, I don't have a house. But I have prayed for so many people who, who, who now have houses. So if I said, until I have a house, I can't pray for others, I would have robbed all those people whom I prayed for. So why are you robbing us of the miracles? There are times when I have prayed for people who were sick, when I was sick and they were healed, and I went back and said, God, but what, what's wrong with you here? You are healing all these other people and you are keeping me sick. He, he says, is it your power? You just do, you are just a channel. Do what I told you to do. And yet as believers, we disqualify ourselves because you look at your own personal experience. Say to your neighbor, neighbor, my personal experience does not matter. I must work the works of him who sent me. Hallelujah. Do you remember the woman of issue, with the issue of blood? I mean, Jesus, she was healed. Jesus didn't even know. I mean, she, she just says, if I just touch the hem of his garment, and she touched and she was just healed. God respected her faith. You know, I have heard people say, you know what, you, you, you prayed, and when you prayed this, and, and they said, I don't even remember the prayer. <laughs> I may even have prayed a very general prayer in church. And for somebody, because they had faith, they said, when I go to church, and God is going to meet me. And because they expected God, God will come through. Do you know that you can constrain a servant of God? And God can use them because you are believing. You're saying, Lord, when I go to church, when I, when, 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 when I go to church, I know in the word you're going to speak to me. And somebody would, uh, who wasn't even thinking, they will say things which will minister to you because God will move the person who is ministering to minister to you in response to your faith. There's also the, God can use the authority of an office. The example I gave of that grandparent who laid hands, he had the authority over the grandchild. And God used that authority even if the grandfather was not believing. Do you remember the story of Hannah? And uh, Hannah, she's believing God for Samuel. She's praying, and she comes and she's praying. While she's praying, the priest, the backslidden priest, is actually accusing her. Woman, why do, don't you have time to drink alcohol at your home? How can you be drunk here? And he, he begins to scold her. And she says, no, 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 man of God. I am not drunk. I'm just pouring out my heart. Amen. And then the, this backslidden preacher then says, oh, you are praying. Okay, be it done to you according to your prayer. God had the declaration of a backslidden priest because of the authority, not because of his faith, not because of his lifestyle. And sometimes God will do that. He will use the authority of a person. And he says, that's why Jesus says, remember Jesus saying, people have been healed. Remember he had a problem with the Pharisees. But yet, 
When he yields them, some people, he says, go and show yourself to the priest. Why he was respecting authority. You see, there's an unction that operates by authority. If you are a parent, you have authority over your child. Whether you believe or not, lay hands on that child because you have authority. If your child is walking into the rebellion, getting into drugs, you have authority. Just say, Lord, whether I believe for you for it or not, it doesn't matter. But based on my authority as a father, I pray right now and I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. So the authority of your office matters. I know you're asking me, where do you find it in scripture? I'm glad you asked. James chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders. And let them pray over him. And anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he is committed sins, he shall be forgiven. Let him call for the elders. So there is a place and a point where you on the basis of authority, the authority you carry, you can pray. And God respects that authority. And things will happen. You can work the works of God on the basis of authority. Yes. You, you know how I learned this? I learned this because of... Uh, I didn't learn it in Bible school or in the Bible. I learned it from the old man of blessed memory, Pastor Franz. One time we, we went down, I went down, I, when I was chairman of CCI, I went down to, 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 to Cape Town. And Pastor Franz says, Doc, we have a problem here in Cape Town. And I said, okay, what? what's the problem? Then he says, I, I really wanted us to do something. He, he says, you know, there's a statue of Rhodes up there. And a lot of demonic things happen because of that Rhodes statue. So, and, and I feel that I was waiting for you because of the authority of your office. So let's go and pray. And I, I went with him and Pastor Lorraine. We went and we prayed. Let me tell you a secret. Please don't, don't quote me. <laughs> I didn't even believe, I didn't even know what he was talking about. <laughs> but, but you see, if, if, if somebody says, on the, on, the, on the basis of your authority, and I felt, oh, in my office, my authority, <laughs> and I kind of felt big, and I, and I said, so when, when we went, we stood there, and I said, on the basis of the authority that Pastor Franz talks about, I bind you and I break the spirit in the name of Jesus. And I, I, was, I was, because I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't act like my office had no authority because the pastor Franz believed there was authority in my office. A week after, that's when the Rose Must Fall campaign started and those statues started falling. But it had nothing to do with me. You, you can't even say, I mean, for the life of me, I don't even know what was happening. God respects authority. You are a manager at work and things are happening in your work and you're just saying, oh, I don't know, I don't know the board of directors. Why are you not using your authority? Yes. The very authority you have there, God will respect your use of authority. You can work the works of God because of the strength of the authority of your office. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. Say to your neighbor, neighbor. Yes. Today he is making sense. I wish you always made sense. <laughs> what must we do that we might work the works of God? The, the, the other way that we, we work the work of God is through the anointing. Isaiah 10 verse 27 says, It shall come to pass in that day that this burden will be taken away from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. The anointing of the Holy Spirit will break the yoke. And Acts chapter 10, 38, and how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth and the, with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And here is the good news. John says, the anointing dwells in you. So why are you waiting for an anointing which is already in you? So the issue really is that as believers, we don't believe the word of God that says the anointing dwells in you. The anointing teaches you all things. The anointing who lives in you, operates in you. So we need to activate the anointing of God and allow the power of God to work in and through us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number whatever. <laughs> 
Sometimes we work the works of God. By God overriding us and God just doing things. It's God's sovereign initiative. It's just, my role is just to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. If the Spirit says do this thing, it means it can be done. And all I do, it's not me, it's not my faith, it's just the Spirit of God saying it. Do you remember in Acts chapter 9, one of the most incredible miracles happens. You see, God did not wait for, for anybody praying for Paul. But God just sovereignly visited Paul and he had an encounter with God and God and he fell down and God says, I am going to save this person by myself. Because if he had said, you know what, I'm going to ask Peter to pray. I'm going to, Peter was going to say, what? Pray for that guy? Who, who was responsible? I mean, the church was angry with the murder of Stephen. And God says, you know what, I can't ask the church to pray for this one because they, they are too angry. So sovereignly, he moves in and he has an encounter. Then God says, he comes to Ananias. Ananias is not even an apostle. He is not a deacon. He is just a brother. We don't even know. They didn't even say, he was not even a cell group leader. And he says, Ananias, I want you to go and minister to this person. Do, do, do you follow what I'm saying? But because Ananias knew what must we do to work the works of God if you believe him whom the Father has sent. So he believed the instruction of the Holy Spirit. And Saul was saved and became Paul. So Ananias simply heard what the Spirit was saying. And his job is just to finish off. You know, we, we in uh, north of the Limpopo, we have a saying, we say, if, if, a, if a work is already done, if the Holy Spirit moves, if it's an initiative of God, or we, we have a saying for those who, are, who understand English, we, we call them uh, uh, cutting the dead. <laughs> yeah. so, so God has already done, he has finished the job, so yours is to just go and cut the dead. You know how it is difficult, most of us, we, 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 you are given this ox and those, those very angry, vicious ox, and they say, you know what, we have a family feast, and you, have to, you are the one who is going to slaughter it. You look at that bull and you say, ah, <laughs> I think I'm the one who is going to die, not the bull. The, you know, what he used to do, I don't know about you, some of you, you, you grew up the other side of town. Well, you know, we, we used to tie these bulls onto, onto a tree, and we had an axe, and you'd go and you, boom, and you kill it. So you look at it, it looks at you, and you say, ah, no, not this one. So, so the, then the others were clever. They would go and they say, because they are trying to train you, they, they just almost kill it, they leave it for dead. Then they say, just finish off. You understand that? that they, we call it, Killing the dead. Muchakadza, for those who don't understand English. Okay. So, so sometimes God does that. When it comes to the working of God, he just finishes, he finishes everything. Then he says, just go in and bring in the harvest. Go and finish off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a sovereign initiative of God. The next is just out of obedience. You know, the Bible says, Lay hands on the sick and they will recover. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. And because it's a command, whether I feel like it, whether I have faith for it or not, I do it out of obedience. So when I just obey the word of God, I mean, I don't know about you. There are things that God has told me to do and I'm saying, God, I, 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 I'm not so sure you, you, you have this right. You think about Peter. Peter, I mean, there was a professional fisherman. They had been fishing all night, and there is nothing. And then this, this newbie, this Mafikesolo, comes and he says, no, cast your nets on the, on, the, on the deep. He says, cast my net. I mean, I've been around this whole, this whole lake, and you say, well, what have you been smoking? <laughs> but he says, but at your word. That's obedience. So whether I believe or not, but at your word, I'll lay hands on the sick. But at your word, I'll cast out demons. But at your word, I'll minister to the, to the people who are in my neighborhood, people who are under my influence. When you do that, out of that obedience, God will begin to do things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And the last way that we can work the works of God is just by, from experience. You know, there, there are so many people who get miracles based on the proven history that they have with God. What do I mean by that? 
You know, if, um, if I have prayed for sick people and they were healed, my faith is built up. I have, I have an expectation. I have, you know, I know that I can, I have, God has done it before. He can do it again. So on the basis of that experience, you see, there are things that you can easily believe God for because of what you have seen before. Yeah, if you ever notice that if you, if you believe God and so you, you start and you believe God for a headache, a headache is healed. The next time you have more confidence. If somebody says I have a stomachache and you pray, you are not even, it's just from the proven record that God working with you. The same way that it, in the workplace, you, the first time you started believing, you believed God, you say, God, can I have an increase? Just a 10%, Lord, just a 10%. And you got that 10% increase. The next time you have a little bit of confidence, Lord, can I, I believe God for 15%. What is it? What is it? It's based on your experience with God. But here's the problem because we don't even go out to start. We have no experiences. We have no proven history with God. Do, do, do you follow? There are things that you are going to try and they will fail. I mean, when I grew up in school, we used to do try, try, try again. If at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again. So you go and you do it. Now, I know you're asking me, where is that in scripture? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. It says, for everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So this principle he's talking about, he's talking about uh, understanding the word of God. He says when you come to the word of God, sometimes you still need milk. You do very little things because you are unskilled in the word of God. But it's still in the same way in the works of God. When you start, you are unskilled because you are a babe. But as you do things, you begin to gain experience. You begin to increase your competences in terms of serving God. Did you know that there is something called competence in terms of serving God? The more you pray for the sick, you begin to know what works and what doesn't work. But you can only know it by trial and error. But most of us, we are waiting to be perfect. We are waiting to have everything said to say, when I just lay my hands and they are going to recover. Listen, you are going to pray for some people and they are going to die. You are going to pray for some, they are going to be healed. Did you know that Jesus... Did not heal everybody who was sick? Did you know that? Did you hear him say, in the days of Elijah, there were so many widows in Israel, but he was only sent to the widow of Zarephath. Did you know that Paul, while he was praying, extraordinary miracles were happening in the hands of Paul, but Paul was saying to, to Timothy, Timothy, ah, your, your stomachache is giving us problems. We have laid hands and things we are not working. Use a little bit of medicinal wine. But Paul did not stop praying for the sick because Timothy was not healed. Are, are we together? So by reason of use, you, your senses, your ability to discern, your competences in serving God will begin to increase and you work the works of God. Right. Hallelujah. So let's try to close. In Mark chapter 16, verses 19 to 20. So then, after the, 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 after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up to heaven and sat down at the right hand of God and they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word through accompanying signs. They went out preaching everywhere and the Lord was working with them, confirming the word with the signs following. But God did not start. Most of us, we want to say, God, start to do a miracle and then I will preach. No, he says, as you go, while you are proclaiming, I will allow you to demonstrate. God will work with you. God will confirm. But I have to take the step of faith. What shall we do to work the works of God? Believe on him who he has, whom he has sent. He said, go lay hands on the sick. I'm not going to lay hands because somebody is already healed. I will lay hands on the sick and it will look like nothing is happening, but I'm going to lay hands anyway. Amen. When I do that, the power of God will fall. So let's close. So, in conclusion, we need to declare that the kingdom of God has come. Because in reality, the kingdom of God has come in Christ. 
And every believer is called to proclaim and to demonstrate the kingdom today. The power is in you. The proclamation of the kingdom of God comes with a demonstration of God's power through works of power. Jesus says, he who believes in me, the works that I do, shall he do also, because I go to the Father. So say with me, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? And say after me, you are responding to yourself, you are answering yourself. This is the work of God. That you will believe on him whom he has sent. I decide to take Jesus at his word. I believe the one whom the Father has sent. And because I believe, I will work the works of the Father. I declare today that because I believe, the works that Jesus did, I will do the same. And greater works than those because you went to the Father. So help me God. Amen. Hallelujah. So, two assignments. Number one. I want you to believe God. Last week I told you if people have problems ask them the question can I pray for you? So that's your first assignment. And pray for people. Let everybody around you begin to know if you have a problem there is one who prays for people in this workplace. The more you pray for people the more miracles will happen. Number two, the second assignment. If there was a problem in your family, call them. Don't wait for them to say, can we travel and go to Esango? Call them and say, guys, there is a problem in the family. Let's call on God. There is no traveling. We are going to call on God. And set a day for the family. Say, you know what? We want to have a family meeting and pray. I am going to pray. The good thing these days is that there is uh, virtual meetings. They say to, to them, you know what, we are going to do a WhatsApp call and we are going to pray. For those who can do a Zoom, say we are going to have a Zoom link, we are going to pray. We cannot allow the devil to, to have our family as a playing ground. I mean, can, can, you, can you imagine? The enemy being very comfortable in your home. And yet you have the authority. So that's what I want us to do. Amen? Praise God. I will ask every head bowed, every eye closed across this whole auditorium. If you are watching us online, I want you to listen very carefully. You see, the only way to work the works of the Father is to believe on Him whom He has sent. You have to believe on Jesus who came, died on the cross, shed his blood on, the cro on, the, on, on that cross for the forgiveness of your sins. Once you believe on him, your sins will be forgiven you. Your life will be made brand new. You will have a new beginning and you will have an impact in the world. So if you have never had a relationship with Jesus, your sins are not forgiven. You don't know where you'd go when you die. I want to pray with you. Every head bowed right now in this auditorium and on, online as you listen to me. If you are saying, I have never accepted Jesus. I have never believed on Jesus. But today I want to believe on Jesus. And when you believe him, the first miracle you'll ever experience is the miracle of the forgiveness of your sins. And whatever disease you have right now, Jesus is going to heal you as a demonstration that he is the only living God. He is the one who is worthy of worship. So I want to pray with you. So if you are here, both online, on YouTube, on Facebook, or you are here on site, and you are saying, my sins are not forgiven me. I don't have a relationship with God, but I want to become a child of God. I want to believe on the one whom the Father sent to die for me. Just raise your hand. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Just raise your hand. I want to pray with you. 
If you are here right now and you want your sins forgiven you, you want to become a child of God, you want to know beyond a shadow of doubt that when you die, you go to heaven. Just show me by raising your hand. And I'll pray for you. Hallelujah. I'll look one more time. Praise God. Praise God. Okay. I don't see any hand on sight, but I believe that there's somebody who is watching us online who needs to pray this prayer. So if you are watching us online, we are going to join you and believe God together with you for your for you to be forgiven when you choose to believe on the one whom the Father sent. So I'll ask everyone to pray with me and say, Father God, I come to you today. I ask you to forgive my sins. To forgive my sins. I choose, I choose to, believe on Jesus, to believe on Jesus whom the Father sent, whom the Father sent who, died on the cross who died on the cross for my sins. For my sins. He rose again he rose again on the third day. On the third day. And today, and today he is seated. He is seated on the right hand of God the Father. On the right hand of God. As Lord of Lords. As Lord of Lords. And King of Kings. And King of Kings. So I receive him today. So I receive him as today. my Lord. As my Lord. And as my Savior. As my Savior. Satan. Satan. I reject you. I reject you. You have nothing in me. You have nothing. And in I have me. nothing in you. I am a child of God. I am the child of My God. sins are forgiven me. My sins are forgiven. And the power of God, and the power of God is being released into my body. Is being released into healing me. And healing and setting me free. And setting me free. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you prayed that prayer, he has heard you. He has forgiven your sins. We want to help you and walk with you along the journey. So I'm going to ask you to, if you are on Facebook or you are on YouTube and you are watching us and you pray that prayer, there is a contact number, a WhatsApp number and an email address which is coming onto the screen right now. Just take those numbers and you contact us. If you are on Facebook, you can actually just uh, inbox us or you can write right there you know, on, the, uh, on the chat and just say, I pray that prayer and we're going to reach out and help you and walk with you. In Jesus' name, welcome into the family. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Pray, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. So we want to move on and have communion right away. And as we have communion today, guys, you can go ahead and share the elements. As we have communion today, when you receive those communion elements, just hold them. Don't, don't eat. The Bible tells us to wait for each other. Okay. The, when you look at that element, there is a, this is a COVID um, compliant kit. So there's a little transparent slip that you can open so that you can get to the wafer. So you, you should just open, you can see. Then the next opening is for you to get to the wine. So, <clears throat> but as we partake of this communion, just receive the elements. As we partake of this communion, I want to link this communion with ministry time. You see, we told you that God works, He works in numerous ways. Sometimes He uses a point of conduct. And we want to use this communion elements as we partake of communion I'm believing God that God is going to show up and heal the sick as we partake of communion I'm believing God that God is going to as you partake of this communion just say Lord I'm believing you for my healing I'm believing you for you to break generational iniquities in my family I'm believing you for a breakthrough in my life I'm believing you that you are releasing me to be able to work the works of God. I choose to believe you. As we do that, I believe that there's, the power of God is going to be released as we partake of communion. Expect to sense the touch of heaven as we partake of communion. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, this is what the Bible says, verse 23. It says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. That the Lord Jesus Christ on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this 
in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You know, when the Bible says you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes, it's saying you appropriate the benefits that he died for. Jesus died on the cross on our behalf as our substitute. He bore our sins on the cross that we may be forgiven. He carried our sickness that we may be healed. He became poor on the cross that we may be rich. So when he says you proclaim his death until he comes, he's saying you're appropriating the benefits that accrue from his death on the cross. So that's why as we partake of this communion, I want you to lean in into whatever your need is and say, Lord, as we partake of this communion, I am proclaiming your power to provide. I'm proclaiming that Jesus paid it on the cross. And because he paid for me, I am free. I'm walking in divine health. I'm walking in the provision of God. Iniquity is broken over my life. And whatever demonic oppression that was coming over my life is broken as I partake of this, this communion. So this is what I want us to do. Hallelujah. So, the Bible says, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and having given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Which is broken for your healing, broken for your wholeness, broken for your for your redemption. So we're going to partake of this broken body of Christ, which was broken for your wholeness and for your healing. Lord our God, we thank you. We bless you for this bread, which represents the broken body of Christ. And we say as we partake of it today, we believe you for healing, for wholeness, for restoration, for the power of God to flow into the lives of your people. Whatever is broken in their hearts, in their lives, in their families, may it be healed. As we partake of this communion, let your power flow. Let the works of God be done. Let the healing and wholeness begin to flow in Jesus' name. We thank you and we honor you. Even your body, the church, is being healed. There's wholeness, there's, work, there's health, there's growth that is coming in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Go ahead and partake of the bread. We thank you, Lord, for your healing power. That's flowing. The Bible says, in the same way after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Father, we thank you as we partake of this communion cup. We remind you of the covenant. You made a covenant with us that you'll come through for us. You'll fight our battles. Father, as we partake of this communion, we declare that this communion ceremony, we are having warfare against the enemy. And Father, we are calling on you as a covenant defender to come and defend your people where they have been attacked by the enemy. Any attack of the enemy that has been arrayed against the people of God as we partake of this communion, you are coming as a covenant defender. So we thank you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We can go ahead and partake of the communion. Hallelujah. Just in faith, just raise your hands to the Father and say, Father, I thank you. And I bless you for your breakthrough. I bless you that you are coming through in my life. I bless you that even as, a part, as I partook of this communion, you heard me and you, are, you have changed my situation. I thank you for your healing. I thank you for provision. I thank you for prosperity. I thank you for the attack of the enemy that is broken in my life, in my family. I thank you for an intervention of God. I believe you that you are showing yourself strong and mighty in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I, I want you to, 
as you go, I want you to go and check on the thing that you are believing God for. If it's a healing, go and check. You will see that God has already healed you. If it's a breakthrough, you'll find that that breakthrough has already come. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Say to your neighbor, neighbor. What shall I do that I may work the works of God? And as you, the neighbor, just respond and say, this is the work of God. That you may believe on him whom the Father has sent. Amen. So the, for our offering message, I just want to read Exodus chapter 12, verses 35 to 36. It says, Furthermore, the Israelites acted on Moses' word and asked the Egyptians for articles of silver and gold and for clothing. And the Lord gave the people such favor in the sight of the Egyptians that they granted their requests. In this way, they plundered the Egyptians. So, those who know the scriptures, you know that God raised an offering out of the Egyptians so that he could fund the building of the tabernacle. Remember, they were going into the wilderness. They didn't need this money. They didn't need the gold, but they needed it for the tabernacle. So God says to them, you ask the Egyptians and I will grant you favor. And that way the Bible says God plundered the Egyptians. And here is the challenge I'm going to give you. If you are an employee and you think you add value in your organization, if you think that there is an opportunity for you and you think that the value you are being paid for, you are worth much more. I want to challenge you in the next three months to prayerfully consider engaging your employer and say, I think I'm worth a little bit. Would you consider a raise for me? I'm believing God that for those who believe God will ask for that raise appropriately. God will grant you favor. And that favor, part of the reason for that favor is for you to be able to finance the building of the tabernacle. If you are in business, you are believing for a contract, you are believing for a tender, or you are believing for a new revenue stream, I want you to say to God, God, open a door for me that the people that I already have a contract with, they can extend my contract, they can expand, they can require more of my services, and God will grant you favor for the purposes of the building of the tabernacle. Amen? Shall we pray? Father, I come before your presence and I ask you to grant favor to your people. For those who believe that they add value, as they request, as they pursue an increase, as they pursue the favor of their employers, as they pursue the favor of those they are contracted to, Father, I thank you that you grant them favor. Even as you say that in that way, you plundered Egypt. In that way, you are transferring wealth to the hands of the righteous. I thank you, Father, that you are granting your people favor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. There's a, here's a disclaimer. If you have not been performing well at work, <laughs> don't go and ask for a raise. You won't go get favor. Because God does not, does not fund your laziness. Don't go and say, Doc said I can go and ask. If you, if you have been warned or you have been lazy, you have not been adding value. But if you know that you have been diligent, you are adding value. If you go and ask for a raise, you will get it. Are, are, are we clear? Amen.
want to hear voices. City Kama Kama Linamanda Kama Lengosi Kama Linamanda Kama Lengosi Sia Tumisa Thank you, Jesus. Yonikosi Osi Sia to me, sir. You're in Cosi. Sia to me, sir. Sia to me, sir. Yo yeah. 